And I'm going to say something really shocking here. Um, around that time of that spiritual awakening that I had, I was in a Christian church. Hi, my name is Maya Zahira. And I have been a spiritual teacher for many, many years, 30 plus years. But in 2016, I went through an additional spiritual awakening that was so jarring and eye-opening. I was experiencing what's called a psychic attack where I was dealing with paranormal activity. And I was trying to figure out what was going on. And this was about three or four weeks into the situation. And I was trying to go to sleep. It was two o'clock in the morning. And I was afraid to go to sleep because every time I went to bed, I was being attacked. Well, I was being attacked. And so I sat on the edge of my bed and I looked out the window and I cried and I said, please, God, help me. Or, you know, divine source, help me, show me how to get through this situation. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on and I don't know what to do. In 2016, I went through this spiritual boot camp, really difficult situation that pushed me out of that feel good spirituality field into some more difficult work. So what happened was I reached out to a colleague of mine and I made a one-on-one -on -one, uh, appointment with her. And I also went to one of her group healing sessions. And what happened was after the group session that I went to, I came home with a book and a piece of jewelry that I had bought at the group healing session. And I put them on my bedside table. And it happened to be a full moon that night. And the next morning, I woke up, I opened my eyes, and there was paranormal spiritual activity all over my bedroom. I have been clairvoyant my whole life. I've seen spiritual things my whole life, but nothing like this. I woke up and there were li there was literally um, fairies and spirits all over my room, and it shocked me. I I jumped and I said, "Oh my gosh, what ah, what is this?" And I closed my eyes and I was like, "Please go away," because I think we do have sovereignty. We can ask them to go away. I said, "Please go away." I opened my eyes again, and there was this one being standing right in front of me looking at me, and I jumped again because I assumed that they would be gone because I asked them to be gone. Well, so um, then eventually I was able to get all of that paranormal activity to leave, but then it just got weirder and weirder. The lights started flashing in my house. I started to see demons in my house, I started to experience what's what's called missing time, where whole chunks of time would would pass, and I would look at the clock, and it would be you know five, six, seven hours later, and it would seem like it was a different day. Um, I also did a video for some of my students, uh, an educational video, and an entity. This like pulsating energy showed up on the video behind my shoulder. And I was demonstrating how to burn sage for protection. And it was almost like that entity was joking and mocking me saying that sage doesn't, it, it doesn't work because look, I'm going to appear right on the video. It was on the video. Uh, wildlife started to act really strange around me. Birds would follow me around my yard. It was very strange. And I was trying to figure out what was going on because what I had always been taught was that if you focus on positive and you don't ever dabble in dark energy, nothing um, like this would ever happen to you. So I was really confused. Like, what? where is this coming from? And then one morning I was feeling really anxious and I got on my yoga mat and I did some stretching for about 30 minutes. And I got myself more relaxed. And when I rolled up my yoga mat to put it away, the book that I had brought home from that healing event was sitting right there. And I looked at that book cover and I saw it in a completely 
new way. The book cover had images of um, angels and clouds. And when I glanced at the book in my more relaxed state, I was more perceptive. And I realized that there were demon faces all over the book cover right there in plain sight. And that's um, a very potent point right there, everybody, that oftentimes negative spiritual forces will be hiding in plain sight where we wouldn't even think to look for them. For example, this book was about angels, and yet there were demon faces all over the book. So that was the first indication that I got that there was something wrong with that group healing session and perhaps with that healer, there's something not right. So then I started to um, mentally try to figure all of this out. And I was really concerned about a friend of mine who was working very closely with that healer. And I sent her a text message and I said, please be careful. I sent that text message, um, not realizing that it would be putting me in danger. I went to bed. The middle of the night, I was jolted awake. I remember my eyelids flew open. And there was a spiritual being hovering over me. It was like plasma energy, a formless plasma energy. But I knew right away that it had a consciousness. I could feel its emotions and its its emotion was wrath, wrath. And I heard its voice, not with my ears, but it actually projected a message telepathically into my third eye. And I heard a booming male voice that said, don't mess with her. She's mine. And then, even though it was a formless being, it reached itself forward and it reached into inside my shoulders and it yanked. It was trying to yank my spirit out of my body. And uh, it had never occurred to me that, well, actually, I believed that entities can't do anything against your free will. So I was shocked that it did any of that. Um, and <laughs> luckily, uh, I guess my spirit is too stubborn, which I'm very grateful for because it was not able to pull it out. But uh, that was the scariest thing that I've ever experienced in my life. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences and I don't get scared very easily. That scared me so much. I rolled over, put my arms over my head and I was hyperventilating. Uh, I didn't move from that spot until sunrise, which I'm guessing was about three hours later. And then once the sun came up, I peeked and I saw that it was gone. Um, and I called a friend and I got some support. In the next couple of weeks, that's when I realized that I was dealing with a, an entity that's called a jinn, which is spelled J-I-N or D-J-I-N-N. -N. And um, that name comes from Middle Eastern folklore. I always, and I think a lot of people assume, well, it's from Middle Eastern folklore. First of all, it's not real. And second of all, if it is real, it's in the Middle East. But I had a firsthand experience with one, and I was living in a, the Midwest of the United States. And from that trauma, well, first of all, obviously, I was able to get free of that situation. I used a couple of methods that allowed me to uh, break free from that entity. I will start off by saying that so many of my beliefs were turned upside down when I went through my experience in 2016 and thereafter. I, I was raised Catholic, um, so I grew up believing in um, capital G-O-D and you know, Mother Mary and Jesus and um, all that whole thing. This is the saints. 
And after I went through this experience, I was questioning everything. So it's been several years since that experience. And and um, I'm sure that my ideas will continue to evolve in the years to come. But right now, I personally don't believe in the personified God. By personified God, I mean like a guy with a long beard floating up in the clouds. I don't believe in that. That's what I was taught when I was little. Um, I respect anyone who does believe in that. I um, I personally believe in, um, I'll call it source. I usually refer to divine source. And when I say divine source, in my mind, I'm thinking not the G-O-D that so many people are referring to and not the god that was in that church <laughs> like it's like i'm not i'm not worshiping or praying to or connecting with any of that um i see god i don't even like to use that word anymore actually because it has so many connotations of what i personally don't believe in and i'll emphasize again i respect whatever what everyone believes because I think it's very personal what people believe about creator source. I think of creator source as an energy that flows through all of us. So it is part of us. It's part of me. It's part of you. And now I'm not in any way saying that every spiritual entity or every spiritual teacher is illusion. But what I did become aware of from that situation and that trauma is that a lot of what people are channeling, a lot of the beings that people are working with that they think are spirit guides are actually not what they think, that they are actually trickster entities. When I, when I refer to false light, because I know false light is kind of a term that's becoming more widespread. I hear more people using that term. So I want to be really clear what I mean. I, I'm using it as an umbrella term to describe any type of imposter entity, any kind of spiritual being that is a dark being or a mischievous being that is pretending to be a being of light. So, for example, um, de uh, uh, demons, uh, human souls that are um, earthbound, earthbound human souls, jinn, as I mentioned, are also shapeshifters. Those are the three most common. Um, also, alien beings. There are, there are certain alien beings that tend to shapeshift. So, these are all beings. Demons discarnate human souls, jinn certain alien beings, and there are some other spiritual beings as well that are known to be shapeshifters in that they're very good at shifting their form to look like something different than what they really are. And so their whole agenda across the board, whatever type of being, whether it's a demon, a jinn, whatever, their whole agenda is to trick people one of the things that false light entities love is to be worshipped and adored. So if they can pretend to be a, be a being of light, like an angel or even Jesus or some other religious or spiritual figure, then they, they get to just soak up all of that love. So that's one of their um, reasons for doing it is because they just love to soak up that energy. Um, a lot of negative beings love to soak up negative energy, the energy of suffering. But what a lot of people don't realize is that they also love to soak up positive energy, like the energy of adoration and worship. And I'm going to say something really shocking here. Um, around that time of that spiritual awakening that I had, I was in a Christian church. I was sitting with a student of mine and she was sitting to my right and we were listening to the service 
And all of a sudden, I felt something hit me really hard on my right temple. And it happened so abruptly that I grabbed my head and I said, ow, really loud. (laughs) And I wasn't, I forgot to be quiet, even though I was in church. And I said, ow. And I looked up and I saw a much larger version of a djinn of a shapeshifter entity. It was a big plasma-like energy. It was 10 or 20 times larger than what I had seen in my bedroom. And I looked up and I knew, um, I can't describe how I knew this, but I looked up and I immediately knew that that entity was pretending to be God. Now, I'm not saying that there is no God. I personally believe that there is like a source source creator but this was pretending to be something okay it was it was like checking in on its people and i found that very disturbing i I, my first thought was how is that even allowed like i can't even fathom that an entity would even be permitted to pretend to be G-O-D, but that is what I saw. So that just emphasizes the point that they love to be worshipped. The second thing, their second agenda is that they love to confuse people. They want to cause confusion. And uh, if they can keep somebody chasing their tail, And for example, like if they can pretend to be an ascended being and channeling messages that are 80% truth and 20% lies, and uh, the entity thinks that it's funny. It's It's a big joke, okay, to mislead humanity. So back to these um, signs of a false light entity. So if you're thinking like, okay, well, there's these things called false light entities uh, or these trickster entities. How do I know if what I'm connecting with? I mean, we're so many of us are, um, you know, genuine, earnest spiritual seekers, and we do want to find some sort of connection um, outside of ourselves. And so how do we make sure that what we're connecting with is actually something authentic? The first thing is we need to be um, just brutally honest with ourselves and stop believing things just because it's comfortable. Like, oh, I want to believe this, so I'm going to keep believing it. We have to step outside of our comfort zone. So to clarify, I no longer believe in the religion that I was raised with. Uh, when I was in my 20s, I stepped out of the box of Catholicism and I spent many years very immersed in new age. And now I also no longer consider myself new age. I'm kind of in, I kind of just have my own perspective. I do think that there is uh, a lot of control. I think that religions tend to use fear-based belief systems in order to control the masses. Um, again, I'm a questioner, so I question everything. If a religion teaches something, then, I, then I'm immediately thinking, well, why are they saying that? I noticed that there's, so what's coming to my mind a lot recently is I noticed that there is a lot of religion programming that people immediately assume that something about reality is true because they were taught that in their religion. And that's okay. People can believe whatever they want to believe. But I'm sitting there going, well, that's, how, that's they, they believe that because the Bible or because their religious text taught them that. But what if we looked beyond that? Because we assume, I say we, like a lot of people, like mainstream, mainstream religious followers assume that their religious text is truth or that it is um historical right and what if it's not i mean we look back at history and we see that humans not to mention dark spiritual forces were for example choosing the books of the bible based to match 
what they wanted people to believe based on their own agendas. And people don't even think about that. So there's there's a lot of control, uh, at, attempts at controlling humanity as a whole when it comes to religions. Um, so I'm always thinking, I'm always pondering. I've, I actually have attended churches recently more out of curiosity. And I sit there and I listen and I go, huh, that's interesting that they're believing they're not upset at this Bible story where God is hurting people. Like they don't think that that's bad. Like it's okay if it's terrible if a human acts this way, they're a psychopath. But if God kills a whole population of people because he's mad at them, then that's okay. That's God's will. And I really question that. I think a lot of the stories, for example, in the Old Testament really are describing a psychopathic God that 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 will murder, you know, huge populations of people. And I don't believe in that God. I again, I don't like to use the word God. I don't believe in that. But I think we need to start questioning every book, every video, every sound healing concert, every everything, and asking, is this beneficial? Is this truth? Is it what it actually presents itself to be? Or is there some um, element of attempted control going on here? So we need to learn how to be the ultimate questioners. And when you question and question and question, that puts you in a space of empowerment. So that's my message of hope is to question everything. And that is what empowers you. I want to thank everyone for listening to uh, my sharing today. And if you'd like more information, I invite you to visit my website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. I also have a YouTube channel by the same name. And I also have books on Amazon, Darkness Disguised as Light, and the Psychic Attack Sourcebook. And, uh, and again, website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. Thanks so much.